Yeah, I've been feeling so good about myself, but then suddenly I'll be hit like a sledgehammer with days like this where every time I look at myself in the mirror, I see a man looking back at me and it freaks me out. Every time I take a picture of myself, it just doesn't look right. My face just looks so manly and I, it's really, really bothering me today. Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Laurel, and I'm a former trans woman. I transitioned in the year 2017 and had gender confirmation surgery in 2019. I lived six years as a woman before having a sudden awakening to the realities of gender identity and what causes a person's gender identity to form. When I realized this, I questioned everything about myself and I changed my whole life to return to living back as the man I was born as. And for the first time in my 43 years of life, I love myself as a man. And it's amazing. And I feel so happy and confident in life in a way that I never could. Especially not when I was defying my own biology and trying to live life as a woman. So I welcome you to this channel where I will discuss trans issues and detrans issues. Thank you for watching. Hi all. It's been a while since I've made a video. You know, identity crisis is a serious thing. You know, I would not wish identity crisis on anybody. It is not a fun thing to experience and all the things that come along with it. You know, detransitioning from one gender identity back to my birth gender has not been an easy path to take. It has involved a lot of a lot of stuff that has come up. A lot of feelings of inadequacy, feelings of failure, things that I already grew up with because of my childhood and the, the religion I grew up in, believing that I had to be perfect. And so now, as you can imagine, it causes a lot of problems in marriage when a person shifts their gender identity. It caused a lot of problems when I came out as trans and now going back to living as my biological gender, it brings up a lot of grief and sadness about what happened that didn't need to happen. The pain and hurt that I've caused my wife in following this selfish path of true authenticity, what I believed to be my true authenticity. When you realize your true authenticity is actually far different than, than what you developed the belief of it to be. I enjoy doing these response videos to my past trans delusion videos because when I was in the delusion I would make these videos talking about my experience as a trans person knowing that they would benefit somebody out there that could hear from my experience and now that I've detransitioned it's so fascinating to look back at myself and the the perspectives and beliefs I had at one time that no longer align and it's it's disturbing it's hard for me to do it's hard for me to look back at old videos of myself and see where i was and where my thought process was so i want to reply to this video that i posted five years ago july 11th today and july 9th was the five year anniversary of when i had my gender reassignment surgery july 9th 2019 and and so July 9th of 2024, five years later, it brought up a lot of weirdness, a lot of weirdness between me and my wife. So let's, let's see what I had to say in this video. We're going to try this again. This is my third time recording this video. Video? We don't care. Only Just get on with it. Only to that my camera was still set to record with the front facing camera. So here we are, try number three. <laughs> what I was trying to make the video about, now that I've said it a couple different times, what I was trying to make the video about is today, 
for some reason has been a rather dysphoric day for me. Meaning, every time I look at myself in the mirror or take a picture of myself, I feel like I look like a man. Because you are a man, that, that was really difficult. I, for those who don't understand what gender dysphoria is like, un, until you experience it, I can't explain it to you. you. You would have to experience it yourself to see the reality is we live our lives in these bodies, this, this meat suit that we're born into, and we perceive everything through these eyes and we interpret everything from this experience that we're having in this body and therefore when we see things when we experience things from this body and from the nervous system that we're in and it it gives us feelings and emotions well up inside of us based on different things that trigger us that is the experience we have and so at this time i was having the experience of feeling in every way like i was female inside like like I had a female brain a female soul but somehow my body was born male and so it was so weird it was so weird to wake up in the morning and go walk in the bathroom and look in the mirror and see a man looking back at me despite my internal belief that I'm a woman and so it, it sucked it was I said I was having a, a bad dysphoric day or bad dysphoria day because what happens on those days is you lose your confidence in feeling good about yourself as a as the female as the female I thought I was I lost I lost confidence in that on those days and I would I felt like I'm just an imposter I'm just a man that's trying to be a woman because the reality is that is what I was experiencing I am a man always was a man and was always trying to be a woman because of this this internal belief that I developed over the course of my lifetime that that was the right thing to do and so on certain days like on this day when I made this video clearly was a day when I was really struggling with that I was really struggling to feel good in my own body and every everything I'd look at and everything I'd hear or see touch smell taste would remind me oh yeah you're just you're an imposter nobody's gonna see you as a woman and it, it was just really hard to deal with and uh, my voice, my voice, I was attempting to try to speak more feminine. I've always had, uh, when I was younger, it took a long time for my voice to drop. I had like late puberty or something and my voice didn't go lower until I was in my 20s or something. And my voice has always been a weakness for me. My whole life I was told, oh, you're shy, or that people would make jokes about well, if Laurel would only talk louder, they, it was always a thing that, that Laurel just doesn't talk very much. You can't get Laurel to say much. And I took that on as a belief in myself that I guess that's just how I am. And so I tried to live up to that expectation that I don't talk very much either. I thought it would get me somewhere. It, it got to the point where at one time I realized that someday I want my voice to be one of my greatest strengths, right? I said... Everybody's been telling me my voice sucks, that I don't have a voice, I don't feel like I have a voice. Well, one of these days I'm going to make my voice something and my voice is going to be my greatest strength. And people actually laughed at me. My family members and think, yeah, right, Laurel speaking publicly, making, yeah, right, and they laughed at me. So then that, that further drove my confidence down in myself. <laughs> Not even people believe that I can do that. But anyway, as a trans person, I was trying so hard to match my voice to the lifestyle. I it used to be the most uncomfortable thing for me in the world when I'd be in one bathroom stall and my wife would be next to me and we'd be in the female restroom of course and she'd want to talk to me. And I didn't want to talk because if I spoke other women in the bathroom would hear there's a man in here what's going on? So it would make it so uncomfortable for me, so I tried to adapt my voice to sound more feminine, and I was clearly doing that in this video, and it's, it's really, it's weird for me to hear. It's a little, little disturbing. And seeing how I'm dressed, with, I was wearing one of my favorite dresses, it was a black, long, soft, flowy dress, and showing my shoulders and things like I was just... <sighs> 
it's weird these these gender norms and gender expectations it's part of the whole reason i fell into this whole trans trap is because of expectations of gender and what's normal for a man to wear and what's normal for a woman to wear and what does that mean it becomes a crazy crazy concept to live with and this is not fun this is not fun for someone who identifies as female even though i sound very much like a male still and I'm working on that. <laughs> to feel so much like a female and to have made so much progress and to be at a state of, of my transition progress where I can look in a mirror and actually see a female looking back at me about 80% of the time is crazy. That is amazing. I absolutely love that. That I can look in a mirror and see who I feel is the real me looking back at me when all... See, again, most of you who live your life feeling right about the gender you were born as, you can't relate to this concept. You get up in the morning and you look at the mirror and you see yourself. But someone who is trans, who has this weird deviation from their biological norm who looks in the mirror and feels one way inside but sees someone else looking back at them it is the weirdest weirdest experience and when you are in transition like I was sometimes some I reached a point where I felt pretty good about myself I'd look in the mirror and I'd see like I said 80% of the time I'd actually see my female self looking back at me and I was quite pleased with that I had my hair and my I do my makeup and and I got lash extensions and things and it made me feel good about myself I could go out in public and feel like I was beautiful for the most part but deep down inside of course I always knew I was still a man and knew that people were still seeing me as a man but I knew that that was something I could never fully overcome so I just had to do the best with what I had and that's what I was doing I was I presented myself in the best way that I knew I could with what I had with the fact that the testosterone did to my body what it did and made me look like a man even though I knew I was not a man <laughs> it's all weird these years I've been seeing somebody else, someone who's familiar but that I'm not supposed to be seeing in the mirror. Now I see the right person in the mirror, however there's days like this where I'm still like shit, I look like a man. Yeah. Even though I did my makeup exactly the same as I do every single day, I should try changing it up now and then try different looks. I'm just too paranoid of doing it wrong. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. I've been feeling so good about myself, but then suddenly I'll be hit like a sledgehammer with days like this, where every time I look at myself in the mirror, I see a man looking back at me, and it freaks me out. Every time I take a picture of myself, it just doesn't look right. My face just looks so manly, and I, it's really, really bothering me today. Some days are worse than others. Most days I just feel perfectly happy and content. I feel like I'm looking female enough that it's fine. But now, there's the problem. Here's one of the problems. As far as my voice goes, as well as my looks. See, when I go out in public, I'm, I'm far enough transitioned it's amazing that most of the time I don't even get second looks from people because they just assume that I'm female. The way I dress, the way I look, I don't think I pass, but it's obvious that I do a lot of the time as long as I don't talk. The way, the way so many people just walk right by me and, and don't even acknowledge me. Now some of that is just people being oblivious to what's around them. Some of it is them not wanting to, to indicate that they know I'm trans, but other times it's just plain people walking by me having no idea because they just didn't have a reason to notice me, a reason to look at me. So, Yes, <clears throat> speaking of that, in mine and my wife's neighborhood that we live in, when we first moved there, of course, I was, we're living in the house that I was still female when we moved into. 
was still living as female. I was never female. Just to clarify that, I don't believe I was ever female. I did believe I was female, and that's why I went down this whole path. But anyway, in the neighborhood, my wife and I would go walking our dog around the neighborhood, and there's this one guy, he's in his 50s or so, and every time we'd walk by, he'd say, Good evening, ladies. And it, it, it was one of those things that weirded me out. I wasn't sure whether he was legitimately thinking we were two ladies, or if he was just being nice and trans-affirming. I, surely he knew I was a man that was dressed as a woman. I, I mean, my body structure gave that away immediately. You could see the shape of my body. It's not even feminine. So, as he'd see us walking, I mean, we all, as humans, we identify people's sex from a distance without even realizing it. We can identify their body shape so easily as that's female, that's male, and it confuses things so much when someone who has all the biology of one sex or gender and claims to be another and expects us to acknowledge them as a different gender, it's very difficult. That's, that's why I always said that my pronouns are whatever makes you comfortable because I can't expect someone to see that I am clearly a man but call me a woman or call me she. That just, that doesn't compute for most people. And it, you, you, those who are trans say, but it's about respect, respecting who I believe myself to be or who I see believe myself to be. Ex respecting who I really am. That's what a lot of trans people believe is that, that people not properly gendering them is disrespecting them and who they are. Not properly gendering a trans person is just people going by what they know of biology and what they have known for their whole lives. It's You can't expect someone to completely shift what is known worldwide as a person's sex. It, it's, it just plays, shows further into why being trans becomes such a selfish thing, where you're so concerned about yourself. Like, like I recently made a video about trans women belonging in women's spaces, and the fact that because it is a delusion and it's a belief about yourself, that doesn't make it right for you to go into women's spaces where women expect there to be only biological women there. Let's continue. The, the glimpse they get of me as I walk by, they just assume I'm female. And that's nice. That is very, very nice. I still once in a while get dirty looks from, well, not necessarily dirty looks, but looks of utter confusion from some people. But, whatever. It's the other people that, that really look you up and down. Usually if you look back at them, up and down, you see that they're very conservative, maybe have a cross hanging around their neck. <laughs> the love of Christ, right, makes you so loving and accepting of everybody around you. <laughs> no, most of the time it just makes you judgmental. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, some of the kindest, most welcoming, accepting people to me actually have been Christ believers, Christians. You know, Christianity comes in all different flavors, and there are some people who take Christianity to extremes where it's just all about Jesus and you've got to have a savior and everything. But then there are those Christians like the ones I've been around who are very loving and open-minded and recognize that we all make mistakes as humans. And now that I've detransitioned, some of these Christians that I was around when I was living as a trans woman who accepted and welcomed me then, now they are very much sympathetic, empathetic towards me and the experience I had, and they're just loving and welcoming me back to normalcy. <laughs> I say normalcy because biologically it is more normal to live according to the gender or, and sex you were born as. People want to confuse gender and sex and say they're two different things. No. When a baby pops out and has a penis, its gender is male. Its sex is also male. Gender has turned into this thing that we've made up in our mind, as if gender can differ from the body somehow. 
If it does differ from the body, that clearly shows you it is in the mind. If your gender differs from your biological body, that's in your mind. In other words, it's a belief that was built in experience. It was formulated in experience and your perspective of those experiences. But yeah, when I go out in public, I want to not have to worry that that people are going to view me as a man in a dress. I know that I was born male and therefore I still have my parts down there and everything so technically oh. I'm physically a man in a dress. This was before surgery. Everybody knows that. Those of us who are trans know that. It's obvious. Everybody freaking knows that. It sucks. <laughs> I got a little anger that's there. That's the way it is. <laughs> and but I'm presenting myself as female in public okay I want to be seen that way want to be and so that's why it's one reason it's so important to us to, to so called pass uh -huh. to be able to be seen as the gender you identify with so that there's no uncomfortability no judgments to just be able to live life as the girl you always felt you should be without people judging you or looking at you funny yeah and the more you can pass the less of that you get which is why it's so important for those of us with a voice issue like mine to really the voice work issue. hard on it to pass not that you have to though that's that's the other aspect of that if you want to pass the more power to you and you should you should do everything you can too if that's what you want but at the same time, you shouldn't feel like you have to. There are, there are a lot of people out there who are very judgmental of trans people who are not trans enough. I think I've talked about that before. Half it. This, this whole concept of having to pass as a trans person, yeah, there, is, there has been such an influx uh, recently of trans people who claim that passing doesn't have to be a part of it, that there's these bearded men, men who have full-blown beards, they've done nothing to make themselves look feminine other than putting a dress and makeup on. They're, they still have beards, and they claim, I am a woman, why aren't you recognizing me as a woman? As he's standing there with his low voice and his facial hair and big muscular stature, and he's saying, why don't you recognize me as a woman? I am a woman, I don't have to pass in order to be seen as a woman. <laughs> It's insane. It's insane. Sure, you may identify as a woman like I did, but if you're doing nothing to make yourself look like a woman other than putting women's clothing on, then then what? what is this? This is a delusion. This is... it's not... You can't claim to belong in women's spaces and to be a woman if you're not even trying to look like a woman. I mean... My deal was I was trying to look like a woman, but I recognized that my body was formed as a man, so I couldn't look like a woman. Whereas these men, they just throw that out the window and just say, I'm a woman, recognize me as a woman, despite my facial hair and masculine features and everything that I'm not changing. It's wild. It's, it's disturbing. And, and I, I, I always recognized that passing was a part of being trans. That was the whole desire was to be seen as a woman in every way. And in order to do that, I needed to look like a woman. I wanted to just be able to live my life and, and go to places like Disneyland and use the women's restroom and things and just have it be normal. That's why I prayed so frequently to, that I would wake up just honestly, physically in every way, biologically a female, so that my life could just be normal. That's all I wanted was normalcy, to live normal as a woman, and in order to do so I recognized that this world expected me to be in a body that was female in order to do that. And as long as my body was not female, I had to conform to what being a man was. And so I did for a lot of my life, until I discovered this possibility of transition and surgery and hormones and everything and then I said, oh, I feel like a woman, okay, I can actually make my body be a woman too. But I couldn't. No amount of surgery or hormones was ever going to make my body form into a woman. There, there are plenty of trans women out there who pass all day long. I mean, there are little characteristics about them that you will always know they are biologically male 
like someone like Blair White. I love Blair White because Blair White is a conservative trans woman who recognizes that she was biologically male, recognizes that trauma played into it. And give it your all and everything. You shouldn't have to feel like people are going to judge you just because you didn't happen to do your makeup just right a certain day or whatever. Or you shouldn't have to worry so much about people judging you for your lower voice when you talk. There are some women with lower voices. It is a different kind of low, but... Yeah, she's still a woman. It's, it's really starting to get harder and harder for me. The more I realize that I do, whether I pass or not, skirt by through public without excessive eye-looking judgment, whatever's going on. It's important to me to look the way I feel and to sound the way I feel. So I am going to be working extra hard on my voice soon. I never really Every did. Every time I've tried, I try the techniques, holding your holding your Adam's apple up in place, and oh, my voice does get higher there. And see if you can hold it up there. Doesn't, sound, it doesn't sound female though. Like a female voice still, does it? No. I still have a lot of freaking work and practice to do. Now I can move my hand, but it's it's just it's hard. It's really hard to emulate the female voice when you've been speaking your entire life with a male voice. Yeah. I think the female voice is not only in the vocal cords, but it is actually something that's learned, something that happens from being growing up female. Uh, not that there's some sexist reason that our voices are different, but yeah, biology. I'm working on that because that's one of the last things for the most part. Like I said, I go out in public perfectly comfortable, feeling like I get by with no dirty looks, no It's like I pass a lot of the time until I get up to the register and open my damn mouth. <laughs> and I, I try to be very selective when I talk, where I talk. Yeah. What's really embarrassing is when I'm in a public restroom. Oh, there we go. Maybe even a couple stalls down from my wife and she's down there trying to talk to me and wanting responses from me across the public bathroom and I'm sitting here, there's other women in the bathroom, and I don't want to talk and have them, because then they'd really, they'd, they'd hear a man talking inside the women's bathroom, and it would probably bother them. Yes. I don't like to do that. I hate that being put in that position, being expected to speak in situations like that because of my voice. It's such a, a hard dysphoric thing for me yes so yes I need to get back to work but just wanted to take a break from work for a minute and make that video and ended up making it three times <laughs> so great so have a nice day whatever you're doing in the world wherever you're at it's a nice day here I never know how to end these videos. Can't see the button to turn the video off unless I turn it around too. Huh. There it is. Goodbye. Uh, oh boy. Yes, voice issues, dysphoria issues. I... Mm. You know, when you detransition, the dysphoria issues are not gone, especially if you've had surgery, and that's what my warning is to those who identify as trans. There is a possibility that, like me, your perspectives and beliefs about yourself may change at some point. And when they do, if you have had permanent surgery to your body in response to this belief that you are female, 
you will be very disappointed. You will then be living life again as a man, but not have the parts. Or as a woman, but not have your womb and ovaries and breasts and things. It's making permanent changes to one's body based on belief, even if it is a very strong belief, even if it is everything you think you are and is your literal identity, still has the potential of being a huge letdown later. You still run the risk of making a huge, horrid mistake that you will regret for the rest of your life. No matter how strongly you believe it is necessary for your happiness right now. And that is where I am. That is where I was. I believed it to be absolutely necessary to my happiness. Absolutely thought it was never going to change, thought I was going to live happily as my woman self for the rest of my life. But through a sequence of further experiences, see in the same way that our life and identity is formed in experience, identity and perspectives can shift with more experience. The more you learn, the more you know about the human psyche and what causes a person to develop identity, the more your perspective can shift and beliefs can change. And when your belief about yourself and your identity changes and you've made permanent changes to your body, that is detrimental and tragic. And I do not want to see anybody have to go through that the way I did. I love you all. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe as I will continue to make these kinds of videos talking about this issue and what it's like having gone through this identity shift crisis. <laughs> Went from he to she to me and still learning, still figuring this out, still figuring out how to live a happy, confident life now having done what I did to myself. And it's not fun. But we're, we're doing it. Thank you all. Catch you later.